This is Japan Spirit. I'm Takashi Kawatani. And my name is Han Yun. This program is about revisiting Japan Spirit in order to explore ways as to how Japanese culture can make a positive difference in the welfare of the peoples of the world. So we have an interesting topic today. Do you speak Japanese language? Today we will talk about the secrets or the mysteries behind the Japanese language. Phrases like arigato means more than just thank you. And the secrets can be found by analyzing the structures behind every word. Speaking of the Japanese word, I want to mention an example of uh, different types of snow. A lot of tourists flock to Hokkaido for what is famous as uh, powder snow. It's konayuki in Japanese. Kona is a powder snow. And there is a very wet, uh, wet uh, bigger size perhaps. Uh, different type of uh, uh, snow called uh, uh, bota, botan yuki, uh, large snowflakes, <laughs> according to my dictionary. So there are there are a number of different types of snow, and also there are a number of different Japanese words to to describe each and every type. Uh, because you have the words in your vocabulary, when you see or touch uh, different types of snow, you can recognize the differences in the snow. And if you come from uh, equator, Vietnam is also near equator, have no concept of the snow, then you don't have a vocabulary. So even if the same different types of snow falling right in front of your, your eyes, and uh, my eyes, I detect, but you don't. Mm -hmm. So language is culture, and the language uh, shapes our perception, and even human relationship, as we'll be talking about today. So today's program, I will reveal a linguistic root, why Japanese people value politeness, hospitality, and respect. I will show you something that your Japanese language teacher has never taught you, perhaps, at the language school. First, let's take a look at this example, and viewers can compare the structures to your own language. Okay, so this is a simple uh, English phrase, thank you. A normal conversation because it's too obvious we omit I but the structure is very simple I thank you now it is very obvious clear who is thanking who I is thanking you person in front of you who has done something good to you so it's a very uh, straightforward the dual uh, two-party relationship and it's called shortcut structure of the English language now this word shortcut structure uh, is a quotation from the book by Mr. Akihara Yosei of Transpace Kenkyu Sho or Institute in Osaka. Uh, let's compare this structure to uh, Japanese language. This slide will show you the English thank you, and the Japanese is, if you're a learner, I'm sure you know, arigato, or to be more polite, arigato gozaimasu. Unless you uh, understand uh, Chinese character, uh, you wouldn't understand, you have not understood the real Japanese uh, language. So I wrote in kanji, arigato comes from two words, ari and gato. Uh, if, I'm, if I directly translate ari, uh, it's a bit difficult, but uh, happen, something happens, or uh, to be, something that, that is there. Gato is gatashi or katashi, meaning difficult or very seldom. So uh, the direct translation of arigato, if there's no I or even you, uh, means directly your kindness is very special and it can't happen under normal condition. So it's very difficult. And of course, English-wise, your kindness is very difficult. It's a very funny uh, grammar, I think, but uh, just a direct translation. Um, so, uh, this could be a frustrating part of the Japanese learners, uh, uh, but uh, Japanese language shies away from exposing subject uh, and even sometimes object. <laughs> so it's very confusing <laughs> for some reason. Can you guess why? Huh? Um, for me, mm. I don't have any clear... Uh, idea of why this happened. But you studied uh, Japanese at the school, a teacher didn't teach you. 
Yes, because like to, um, I mean like when I take the Japanese mm. language class, mm -hmm. like um, all these phrases you've been talking about, mm -hmm. it's written in hiragana. Oh, and, hiragana. And the teacher just asks the students to uh -huh. repeat the sentence. Yes, but if you move on to advanced course, do they yes. give you kanji? <laughs> uh, of course they do, but <laughs> okay. like for the very beginning, the beginning. lessons, like, hiragana. yes, okay. only hiragana. So the key is we got to learn the kanji to really appreciate the nuance of the, of the word. Yes, I think so. Okay, next animation shows hidden subject in the language and uh, who the Japanese are thinking and why, they, why it is unnecessary to say uh, who that person is. That's the animation about the uh, arigato uh, up-down structure. Um, for me, even though this animation is mm. very short, Mm. but it carries mm. um, a deeper meaning oh. of Japanese language and it mm. helps me as a Japanese mm. language learner mm. to understand the language better. Okay, um, the point is the upper part where God is hidden uh, is unconscious <laughs> for Japanese, even for the Japanese person, mm. unless you uh, study the background of the language. Uh, it's unconscious and it's invisible. And yet, Japanese person is saying arigato gozaimasu uh, a few dozen times, or maybe a few hundred times if you're working for a shop or restaurant, without That's knowing. True. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, without knowing or unconscious invisible have been the key word of the Japanese culture in our programs, uh, for the past several programs. Because it's deep-rooted, we don't notice, right? So Japanese are thinking something great, higher up, greater than the person in front of you. Of course, the person has done something good to you, so we want to thank you. But before I thank you, Ha-san, for bringing me uh, good food or cold tea, whatever, nice of you, my appreciation does not go to you first. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> it goes up and the invisible and come down to you, oh, so you're the second person who can catch my appreciation, <laughs> okay? So it's very interesting. That's why I, I don't have to say I, I don't have to say you uh, mm -hmm. so much, because it's kind of a impolite mm -hmm. to say, I am thanking you, kind of a, I'm a, I, 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 I hold uh, the, the power of my language, right? Oh, appreciation goes up, mm -hmm. like we present our food, in Shinto shrine to the yes. God first, remainder we take, yes. itadakimasu. So language, arigato gozaimasu, also comes after thanking the God first, and then to the human beings. Oh, I see. It's up, down, up and down indirect. I'm, I'm, this program is curious about the Japanese work culture. How work culture is being perceived by uh, non-Japanese employees like, yeah. like, like yourself. What, what are some of the new knowledge, new findings? I find that, yeah. especially in this company, mm -hmm. all people around me, and even in my managers, uh -huh. they lead me to do not fear making mistakes. They encourage you to go in front, to to go, the in front. go in front and oh. never, never fearing mistakes. Really? I make yes. Oh, huh. many mistakes. mistakes. Many mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so I made many mistakes and, wow. and making proposal. When I talking to the mask, uh, to the customer, uh -huh. I, I made many mistakes. Uh -huh. And the the biggest mistake uh -huh. I have made is well, when I I, I never code the code in the program before. I I I must make the code my code program. I spend spend all of day all uh -huh. day uh -huh. uh, I I, I code, uh -huh. but on the deadline. Uh -huh. My, my, my program didn't work well. Uh -huh. I think, why? Why I must do this job? All right, all right. If uh -huh. the manager and the senior want uh -huh. me to do it, uh -huh. they must teach me. Uh -huh. They must, but uh -huh. they, you do it by yourself. By yourself? By yourself. All right, all right. They teach me well. If only they teach me well, ah. I never, did, I never make this mistake. Okay. But after uh -huh. uh, the time, I, I uh -huh. I think, I, I learned after that, uh -huh. that if this is Japanese style. Oh. You fail, you learn, and you grow. Oh, I see, I see. I see, the, I see, you, I see. the failure is part of success. Failure is part of success. Do you think that 
if this were an uh, Indonesian IoT solution company yeah. in Jakarta, let's say, because you're from Jakarta, customer behave differently and your bosses will behave differently? Maybe in my country, they, oh. yeah, not, not all, mm -hmm. but, but commonly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't mistake. Oh. Must, <laughs> because the customer is really the want the, the, the solution. Uh, solution. <laughs> you must. Uh, provide the good ah. things and the good solution. Ah. How about how about uh, people to people communication relationship in the office? I didn't experience many something like bad. Maybe you uh -huh. can say because I am foreigner, uh -huh. so they say something bad to me. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't I didn't experience that. You you they, use they, Japanese language? Uh, almost. 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 I use Japanese language. Okay. So uh, let's kind of uh, summarize. English is very simple. I thank you. It's a shortcut. And uh, Japanese is uh, up down structure. Uh, it goes up and down, right? And uh, this, so you can say the invisible world is hidden uh, in the Japanese language and thought. Yeah. Um, actually, this up down structure has another uh, interesting function. By indirect communication, uh, uh, Japanese uh, people make uh, differences of views not stand out, mm -hmm. not come out so clearly mm -hmm. in, in conversation, in human relationship. So that's why we can avoid a head-on collision mm -hmm. between persons, uh, between negotiating parties, and perhaps between negotiating mm -hmm. countries. Uh, so sentence without subject can be very frustrating to foreigners maybe but to us Japanese it is a kind of a strategy for peace mm, I see what do you think but here I I am wondering uh -huh. because um, too many languages that follows the subject verb and object structures mm. like English or mm. Chinese mm -hmm. sometimes it can be considered quite rude, rude. to omit the subjects of the oh. sentence. So in this case, I wonder in um, international like diplomacy or negotiations, can this be considered a weakness as well? I, I, I think you hit, the, you hit the very important point. I think it is a weakness in negotiation, uh, diplomacy, of course. But uh, so uh, I am of the opinion that the Japanese people must learn how to defend themselves mm -hmm. with the shortcut language structure. Uh, not just dwelling on the uh, uh, up-down structure. Because oh, outside I Japan, I doubt if there's a god <laughs> hidden <laughs> in behind the curtain oh, of I international see. diplomacy. I see, I see. Uh, we have to have it both ways, or two, mm -hmm. sword, two swordmanship. <laughs> so the secret is to try to be flexible. Flexible. Oh, I see. Uh, long sword and short sword. Oh, I see. I'd like to show you I'll talk about one more language uh, today. As popular as Arigato gozaimasu is this one called Sumimasen. Do you have any experience about this word, Sumimasen? Um, I think Sumimasen is also one of the most frequently yes, used yes, phrases yes, in yes. Japanese language. Right. And in the very first like uh, lessons of Japanese mm -hmm. language, mm -hmm. I learned this um, oh. phrase as okay. well. Oh, you do. But the meaning uh, was basically, excuse me, Ah, but excellent. since I'm living in Japan, mm -hmm. I came to realize mm. that Japanese people use sumimasen in many situations. Well, not just excuse me. Yes, okay, that's true. Okay, that, that, that's a point, uh, my viewers. Actually, what's confusing about sumimasen, what's interesting about sumimasen is the same, the same word is used in two different contexts. One is, I'm sorry, yeah? and also, thank you. So this apology and appreciation uh, those are two entirely different contexts, uh, meanings, but the same word is used. So, uh, so there must be some commonality between the two words, apology and appreciation. Can um, you think of any similarity? I think one of the core commonalities mm. between apologies and appreciations mm. is to show mm. the sincerities of oh, the speakers to the okay. hearer. All right, okay, sincere apology, sincere appreciation. That, yes. that, that, that is quite true, because it is unconscious. Let's make mm -hmm. it conscious. Sumi, masen, again, two words. Sumi, or sumu, and masen. 
Right? It's used in two different kanjis or meanings. One is the left hand side of the slide, sumo. This sumo is done, something is finished. Okay? And the right hand side, sumo, is clear. Analogy is uh, what the Japanese people like so much when they are stuck for ideas, they go out to the uh, mountain, river, streams. Mm -hmm. uh, muddy water oh. is not good, right? Yes. Muddy water becomes clear water. Mm -hmm. Then we can fish and swim. Mm -hmm. But what's even better is our heart becomes clear. So we want our job is done, then, uh, then and we want our heart to be clear. And that, that's the original meaning, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, not uh, sumimasen is a negative form, so uh, not done is the first word, uh, meaning. What is not done is apology is not done enough. And appreciation is not done enough. That's why Japanese keep bowing and keep saying thank you, thank you, thank you. It's kind of a thank you competition. Yes. Which one give up <laughs> first <laughs> of saying thank you, right? On the right hand side is clear. So my heart is not clear. So, same thing. Until our heart becomes clear, after having done enough apology appreciation, we continue oh. uh, apologizing. And diplomacy, we keep apologizing, is not a good strategy, but uh, th there's a good aspect to it, yes, maintaining the, the harmony. Now, speaking of apology, uh, if you watched our first program, program, program of faith, uh, you might remember this uh, picture from my latest book, Winning Together at Japanese Companies. Um, area uh, both, this is a working work situation, on the left is Japanese and uh, right is non-Japanese. Suppose both people have the equal size of a job uh, responsibility, a job descri uh, description. Uh, however, Japanese person tends to feel uh, sorry, I may say sorry, more often in a larger area than uh, his uh, predetermined area of responsibility. Even if even the job is not directly under his responsibility, he or she tends to say, oh, I'm sorry, because work is related or overlapped in positive sense in Japan. On the right hand side is uh, somewhere core of the responsibility. Uh, she may feel uh, sorry and may say sorry. Generally speaking, this is no offense. But uh, in a very tough, uh, shortcut world, uh, you, once you say, I'm sorry, so prematurely, you get more prob troubles than, 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 than good things. So by enlarging the area of feeling sorry and saying sorry, head-on collision is avoided in Japan. Uh, you worked in a, a Japanese uh, company in Hanoi a long time ago. Yes, Do I you did. remember Japanese expatriate uh, busy saying, I'm sorry, you know, in order to maintain the peace and <laughs> quiet? Oh. Does it ring a bell? Um, actually, the time when I worked there, um, the, um, the language oh. we used to oh. Oh. Communicate uh -huh. was English. Oh, English. <laughs> no. but, oh, okay. but I mean, like, even though when they um, when they speak, um, even though they speak um, English, mm. but they have the same attitude and they oh. have the same kind of style when they oh, speak Japanese. It's, it's, so it's, they keep saying thank you and sorry <laughs> all the more, time. It's even more confusing than uh, uh, speaking shortcut, but thinking uh, up down. <laughs> yes. Okay, it's interesting. What area of work do you find uh, uh, challenging or similarity or differences working with the foreign, foreign employees? I noticed mm. the foreign employees mm. value mm. relationships oh. they build between oh. co-workers. Oh, is that right? So mm. than, than individual benefits oh. they get from their job. Really? Yeah. Is there any differences you, you notice? I guess there are, uh, there are not many people mm, mm. who want to change mm. his or her mm. job in mm. a short term. Mm. Short term. Ah, okay, mm. okay. That, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that, that's good All right. for our company. I see. Okay, uh, so how's your impression today? Um, I think today's program is very interesting and I came to know a deeper meaning of Japanese language 
And at some point, I hope that my Japanese teachers had taught me about these different meanings <laughs> so I could use like these okay. phrases okay. in a better sense. Okay, right. So Japanese are known to think in curvy, uh, both yes and no fashion, rather than uh, linear yes or no or black and white. But that's why uh, Japanese people tend to be misunderstood as uh, vague, indirect, and therefore not competent enough as uh, leaders or even negotiators. But as we have seen today, Japanese people are not vague for the sake of vagueness. They think in up-down uh, mode of thinking. So, uh, I'm sure most of the viewers, uh, non-Japanese viewers, speak shortcut languages. So, if you're tired, tired, tired every day of uh, needing to defend yourself with a shortcut uh, language, uh, speak like Japanese people do. Uh, you might find your words neutralize aggressive uh, friends or foes or antagonistic human relationship. At the same time, Japanese people need to acquire a shortcut language defense armor, so to speak, in today's world because it's full of aggression. And this is Japan Spirit. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, goodbye. goodbye.